you know that kepler newton type two body systems have elliptical orbit solutions that is it forms a closed ellipse if it starts from the point a then it returns back to the same point a however sometimes this ellipse itself can be seen rotating this is called apsidal precession the semi major axis was initially located at a in the next cycle the semi major axis has moved to a new point b and in a further cycle it has moved to the point c and so on it keeps shifting during a precession so the ellipse is not uh, stationary it's not constant the ellipse itself is revolving so this formula without this coefficient 1.1 would have given a non rotating stationary ellipse this formula is not discussed in standard textbooks because it is not known to anyone else as of now neither newton nor einstein knew about this formula here we will show you the simplest and the most intuitive way to understand this phenomena of apsidal precession so this coefficient occurring along with theta is the factor which causes apsidal precession let us now see how and why this uh, factor comes about here this figure shows the variables used in the analysis small r is like the distance between earth and sun or um, uh, earth and moon and so on and uh, theta is the angular displacement capital r with an overhead arrow is the position vector these are the usual standard notations so this big capital m is the mass of the bigger object and small m is the mass of the uh, smaller this tiny object revolving around the massive object in this process angular momentum is conserved a capital a is the angular momentum and it is defined as equal to m r square d theta by dt this m r square d theta by dt is a constant uh, which is determined by the initial conditions the net energy e is also conserved e is equal to half m dr by dt square this is the radial kinetic energy term plus half a square so this a is the constant angular momentum this half a square by m r square is the rotational kinetic energy term then this uh, gmm by r not uh, is a constant um, and it's not important to describe here we'll not uh, go into this this minus gmm by r term is the familiar gravitational potential energy term and there is an additional energy term half c by mr square the energy equation has an additional energy term half c by mr square in case of pure elliptic orbits without apsidal precession this term c is zero here it is some non zero constant note this term half c by mr square is similar to the rotational energy term half a square by mr square this new term half c by mr square basically comes from the gravitational field the gravitational potential is modified due to some reason for example presence of a third mass asymmetries in the mass distribution of the massive object uh, and so on so the gravitational potential is no longer simply minus uh, gmm by r but it is modified by this inverse square term the new gravitational potential energy is minus gmm by r plus half c by mr square so the solution to this modified energy conservation equation is r equals r not divided by 1 minus epsilon into cosine of square root of 1 plus c by a square into theta plus theta not here theta not is a constant it is a constant of integration determined by initial conditions r not is a constant called the semi lattice rectum and it is given by a square plus c divided by gmm square so it's a constant 
epsilon is the eccentricity of the orbit like the eccentricity of an ellipse so epsilon this is also a constant the formula r equals r not divided by 1 minus epsilon into cos of uh, square root of 1 plus c by a square into theta plus theta not this formula is a lot similar to the usual elliptic orbit solution but with one key difference the angular variable theta here is associated with a constant coefficient that is the square root of 1 plus c by a square when c is 0 this formula just becomes the equation of an ellipse when c is not 0 this theta coefficient leads to apsidal precision so so this factor is called the abs apsidal precision factor this factor depends on both the angular momentum value a and the factor c coming from the modified gravitational potential the system of two conservation equations that is the angular momentum and energy conservation is equivalent to this one force balance equation d square by dt square of vector r that is the acceleration of the smaller mass is determined by two force factor one is the familiar gravitational force term minus gmm by r square directed along r cap or the radial direction along vector r and uh, this additional term c by m r cube the c by m r cube force factor is coming from the coming due to the modified gravitational field Newton had in fact uh, anticipated this inverse cube force in his uh, theorem of revolving orbits but neither him nor the scientists uh, who followed him fully realized the potential of this term if the basic revolution is considered as positive in the anticlockwise direction then a positive c value implies a retrograde or a clockwise precession that is precession in uh, a direction opposite to the basic revolution and a negative c value implies a prograde or uh, anticlockwise pre precession which is precession in the same direction as the basic revolution suppose theta not equal to zero in this formula so the initial condition uh, is theta not equal to zero so uh, then at uh, theta equals 0 we get r equals r naught by 1 minus epsilon because cos 0 is 1 so r naught by 1 minus epsilon this is the length of the semi major axis we will again get uh, this length r equals r naught by 1 minus epsilon when this term square root of 1 plus c by a square theta equals 2 pi because theta naught equals 0 cos can become 1 again at uh, 2 pi cos 2 pi is 1 mm -hmm. so this factor inside cos cosine uh, function 1 plus c by a square theta must be 2 pi that means theta is not 2 pi it does not complete one whole revolution or it uh, completes more a little more than a revolution so whatever that theta is now 2 pi by square root of 1 plus a square to get back the same semi major axis uh, length r equals r naught by 1 minus epsilon so the semi major axis in this case has precised by this uh, angle in one cycle that is 2 pi by square root of 1 plus c by a square minus 2 pi so this is the angle by which the semi major as uh, axis has precessed in one cycle so and this gives the rate of uh, precession also so when the c value is positive we get uh, we saw that we get a retrograde or clockwise precession the precession is in the same direction is in the direction opposite to the basic revolution so the basic revolution is anti-clockwise shown by this small black arrow the object starts at A and goes around in an anti-clockwise manner like this. While the precession shown uh, by this, while the precession is shown by these dotted uh, orange arrows is in the clockwise direction. First, the semi-major axis is located at A, then it shifts clockwise to location B, then it shifts again to location C. So it keeps shifting in this clockwise fashion in each cycle. Uh, this precession is because the coefficient of theta in the solution is greater than 1 
here uh, the coefficient is 1.1 and we have used a large eccentricity 0.8 because the figures have uh, more visual clarity with high eccentricity so this uh, a coefficient greater than 1 uh, implies a retrograde precession as shown in this figure when the c value is negative we get a prograde or anti clockwise precession that is precession is in the same direction as the basic revolution so the basic revolution is uh, anti clockwise shown by this small black arrow the object starts at a and goes around in an anti clockwise manner uh, uh, so the precession shown by these uh, dotted orange arrows is also in the uh, same anti-clockwise direction as the basic revolution. First the semi-major axis is located at A, then it shifts anti-clockwise to B, then it shifts anti-clockwise to C. So it keeps shifting in this anti-clockwise fashion in each cycle. Here the coefficient of theta in the solution is less than 1. We have used uh, 0 0.86 here. 0 0.86 is the coefficient of theta. Basically, these modified ellipse formulae uh, with a theta coefficient uh, are the formulas which uh, doesn't appear in any books because uh, no one else apart from neophysics know about it. So to recap, we get apsidal precession when the angular momentum is conserved and the gravitational potential energy is modified by this inverse square term or equivalent to force equation uh, is modified by this inverse cube term. So under this modified gravity conditions, we get uh, precessing orbits, uh, which are almost same as elliptical orbits, but with a uh, theta coefficient, which causes the precession. In, uh, in the case of ellipse, there is no coefficient of theta. It's just one. And in case of precession, it's either greater than one or less than one. In the next part, we shall discuss nodal precession in a similar uh, manner, simple and intuitive uh, manner. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, for now, we stop it here. Please like and share the video and subscribe to Neophysics YouTube channel. Thank you.